Welcome back guys. Today we are doing a classic GPU battle. That's right. It's Team Red versus Team Green. It's Ruby versus Luna. It's the Radeon X1900 XT versus the GeForce 7900 GTX. And of course we will compare the cards and dual GPU setup using Crossfire and SLI. I'm going to test these cards on the first generation of chipsets from ATI and NVIDIA that support native dual X16 PCIe slots. I got two motherboards from ASUS using Socket 939. Although they are very similar, there are some differences I like to point out. The first thing I noticed is that the NVIDIA board has additional North and South Bridge fan headers. It also seems to have a better VRM solution and an extra Molex power connector. Before we look at the cards, let's have a better look at the main difference between the two chipsets. While ATI supports two X16 slots connected directly to the North Bridge, NVIDIA is connecting one to the North Bridge and the other to the South Bridge. And so possibly adding latency and a bandwidth bottleneck between the North and the South Bridge. ATI claimed their express route benefits mid and low end GPUs the most, since they don't have a crossfire cable between them but they have to rely on communication over the PCIe slots. Let's have a closer look at the chipsets. ATI's R580 was a brand new chip and the first single chip to support dual X16 PCI lanes. ATI did have some issues with their cell bridge, so most motherboards were using the Yuli chipset instead. Nvidia on the other hand reused existing chips. The Enforce 4 chip was now used as a cell bridge. The C51 chip took the North Bridge role. The C51 is actually a mobile IGP chip. So yeah, there's a disabled GPU in there. ATI was really proud of their solution compared to the competition. And you can see that on their Tech Day presentation slides. Time to power on the systems and find out how loud these cards are at boot up. Here's a quick look at the specs. The 7900 has slightly higher clocks on the core and the memory. But ATI doubled down on the pixel shaders, hoping for shader heavy games in the future. Before looking at the benchmark results, you need to know that both systems are using the same CPU and memory at stock settings. The CPU I used is the Athlon 64X2, the 4800 Plus. These systems would be the best you could get in the beginning of 2006. 
right before AM2 socket and DDR2 was introduced. First up are the synthetic benchmarks, 3D Mark 2003, 2005 and 2006. First game I'm testing is Unreal Tournament 2003. At 800 by 600 we seem to have a clear CPU bottleneck. At high resolutions we can see that ATI beats Nvidia in a single GPU setup. But the SLI scaling works so great that the 7900 takes the lead in a dual GPU setup. Next up is Far Cry 2 and a clear win for the X1900 XT. The result for fear is somewhat strange as crossfire scaling seems to not work at all at the high resolution. Last up is Crisis. Here we can see we are heavily CPU bottlenecked. Because SLI and Crossfire only start scaling in the last test. But still, a clear win for ATI. Alright, time to come to a conclusion. I feel like these cards were suffering from a CPU bottleneck and were unable to show their full potential at that time. I really would love to compare these cards again on a faster platform, let's say a X58, first chipset to support both Crossfire and SLI. So if you like to see a video on that, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Bye for now.